listening to End If Love Remains, a unique show spotlighting people, ideas, science, culture, and art. Your host, Mike Lovett. Good afternoon, Rachel. Yes, this is your host, Mike Lovett, and you are listening to the great podcast in the sky, And If Love Remains. Welcome to the show we have in studio again friend of the program just always great to have him mr jack c ross welcome to the show glad to have you back man yeah thank you mike great to be back it's been a while it's been too long yeah it's been too long and my voice just cracked (laughs) (laughs) anyway how are you doing what's what's new in your world how's how's the world at the ross clan uh we're doing well thank you good yep uh just uh you know, trying to, uh, I guess, consummate what's best for the future. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, here before it gets too hot, as we know it, it, it will, uh, I'll be ready to move forward. So we need to adjust. All right. So yeah. anyway, yep. Yeah, uh, just uh, want to get some ducks in a row in that way. Uh, you know, as they say, you'll be ready for whatever's coming. For so. come what may. Yeah. I hear you. So I so Jack, what's uh what's on your heart, man? What what's uh, what's on your mind? What's what what do you what do you uh what are you thinking about these days? What's what's going on? Are you thinking more about uh present events? Are you thinking about big picture or what what do you got going on in that? Uh yeah, I would say uh you know the you know, just uh, goals for the future, um, you know, and uh, I, I guess, you know, the challenge is today, you know, Mike, is unfortunately um, things are changing, as we know, really rapidly. Right. Um, and there's certainly, unfortunately, quite a bit of instability uh, in the world. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm no doom and gloom guy by any stretch of the imagination but unfortunately you know i think uh, we're gonna see uh, a major uh fall in the economy um and so you know just need to be prepared for that um and do the best we can and uh, i think you know one of the things that's important uh, i've been speaking to some uh, good folks i know and uh you know, respect and trust. And that is, you know, collectively coming together uh, as a community to be more self-sufficient yeah, um, and not uh, rely, um, you know, on the conveniences of modern systems that we're so, uh, you know, accustomed to and spoiled by, quite frankly. Well, and, and I don't think the problem are the systems. I think the problem is that they get, is the meddlesome, government that comes in and thinks that they owned created and control the systems and in right. a way they they control them because they have the their the guns at hand but mm-hmm. um they certainly didn't create them they certainly don't you know take care of them um that's all done by private hands um but i do think like um unfortunately too many people assume that it's the government that has created a scaffolding that that our economy and our society rests on when the truth is the government is nothing more than a leech that takes from um the, you know the 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 pores of of the people mm-hmm. yeah well um we you may have talked about this i know somewhat in the past i think one of the things you know unfortunately I don't know, people don't take enough time maybe to really seriously consider, you know, what, uh, what, are, what are you witnessing now uh, that's going on, you know, in the world and here in this country, you know, politically, like you said, um, you know, massive corruption powers, we know it, unfortunately, 
and they're you know what what is what is their objective what is their end game right um and and the reason i think it's important for us to really you know um think about these things deeply and consider how it's going to affect us you know our families our friends in the future and the people we love and care about uh in this country and that is you know it's you know we've talked this before how do you recognize tyranny how, how do you recognize evil so you know if you're just going to sit here and ignore it and say oh you know in the end it's all going to work out you're a fool i mean you really are um you know you know it's interesting people- i i don't see many people that i mean there are plenty of people that ignore it, that ignore it but right. i think I, the reality is most people see it they acknowledge it and due to tradition due to you know other factors convenience um due to i don't know what but they um they assume it's either going to go away uh, let me let me give you an example i went to a uh I went to a presentation on the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, um, and it was it was interesting, but it was only the it went through it and it had some interesting points. But then it got into you know have we overstepped our bounds in the Constitution? And, and of course the answer is yes in every way in every possible way possible that we have overstepped the bounds of the. And when I say we, I mean the people that we have allowed in charge of the of the government institutions have overstepped in every way mm-hmm. and there's never a question of well when they overstep what then right the the answer if if, there, if it is even asked the answer is something like well then vote in good people that will rein it back in that seems like a faulty premise that seems like that is not going to happen and it only uh, supports the false idea that uh, the the government can uh, can be saved by voting the quote the right people in. Um, well, yeah, I think it's interesting you bring this up because um, <laughs> you know wh- whatever you want to say. So we've had these you know elections. You know, national elections, midterm elections, and local. So, you know, <clears throat> I think uh, Arizona is a great example of that, you know, with this uh, Carrie Lake, Katie Hobbs situation. And, you know, it's, it's just staggering. I mean, how, how does Katie Hobbs stay in power and position? Uh, in the state of Arizona when it's a conflict of interest directly against the whole electoral process. Well, because nobody's going to stop her. Right. So, yeah. And so, you know, it's it goes back to, like you're saying, I mean, you know, here's the way I look at it. Even if Carrie Lake, you know, won, which I believe the election was corrupted personally, um, uh, I have a friend of mine hasn't sent me the information yet, but there's some massive evidence um, that's now come forward on the actual collusion and corruption, you know, here in Arizona, specifically Maricopa County. But I don't want to get down that rabbit hole today. But, you know, even if Kerry was in power, let's say, you know, and you know this, it's like they have their hands tied. Right, because nobody else is on the team to make you know significant difference and change. And you know the reality is with change, you know there's going to be periods where people uh, you know don't like it. It's you know it's a painful transition, whatever that you know may be from one's perspective. But bottom line is, you know I've I've known about this in the past. You know where. Uh, people go to Washington, get elected, and they get out there as a congressman or senator, uh, more, more likely a congressman. That's kind of your foot in the door. 
Um, and, you know, their hands were just absolutely tied. Um, and the reason was because they weren't willing to join the good old boys club in Washington. Mm -hmm. They just refused. They stood on moral character and principles that I'm not going to get involved with this corruption. I'm here, you know, to represent my constituents and make a difference, positive change. And I, you know, know what we need to do. I may not have all the answers, but there's certain things we can definitely, uh, you know, which kind of goes to my point. There's when it's this deep, mm -hmm. like the only thing, and, and 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 I've said this before. I think people think I'm a Debbie Downer or that I'm I'm negative or have lost hope. And the truth is, I've actually gained so much hope mm -hmm. in the re realizing that I actually have a say in the matter. And right. my say is to disengage. My mm -hmm. say is to say, you guys are so corrupt. Right. You're so insane. Um. And, and, and frankly, it's immoral, it's immoral for, for people to think like they, they can vote a representative. Take the, check this out. Let's say, let's say I was going to court. Okay. Hmm. And, and in fact, I'm going to court and I need a lawyer. And so I need somebody to represent me in court. Right. And so John, you're, you're my adversary. You're my, the prosecuting attorney, but right. what you're going to do is that you're going to actually vote for my representative to, you're going to choose who my representative is in order to represent me in court. Now, am I going to get good representation? Is somebody going to represent me my, in my interest or is somebody going to represent you in mm -hmm. your interest? Right. And that, that is end up what happening in all forms of government. When we vote in right. a representative, essentially, half the his considered uh, half the people who voted um are aren't represented and and right. frankly he's not representing me mm -hmm. so I, I say i mean i say no one has the right to speak for me right and sorry that's just if if you don't if you the government should not be allowed to do anything that I can't veto personally. Mm -hmm. Right. And make a way. Does that mean you can't murder? No. I mean, that's right. not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like, there has to be an opt out clause. There always has to be an opt out clause to say, I'm, I'm not interested in participating in this. And it, and it can't be, we'll move away. That makes no sense. That's, that is, that's tyranny. That's slavery. Right. Know? Right. Well, yeah, I, you're right, because <clears throat> the strange thing, and I uh, have seen this with individuals that, I guess you would say, take on personal responsibility in a, you know, a court case, and they sit, you know, the judge is like, well, you need, you know, you need to get legal counsel. No, I don't. I'm representing myself, you know? Um and then, of course, uh, I've seen these so-called judges, you know, tell them, well, you know, that may not be in your best interest. You can get a court-appointed attorney. Right. I mean, you you know, you got to be insane to go with a court-appointed attorney. I mean, seriously. Well, but sometimes it, you don't have a choice. And, right. And, and but, you know, the, but you're right in the sense, like, like, the law should be so clear that anybody should be able to understand and represent themselves under the law. They should be so few and so clear that it's easy to understand whether you've broken the law or not. Right. Yep. And it's just not, there's so many laws. Um, there's over, I think there's over 50,000 regulations on a hamburger that you buy at McDonald's <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. Like anybody who thinks that's normal or is good or isn't a hindrance to uh, the economy, right. like they don't understand. Like, why do you, wh wh what's wrong with 10,000? Yeah. What's wrong right. with 5,000? <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's like when people say, yeah. like, if you were to make the propose, you know what? I'm going to, I suggest that, that we go um, back to Obama's federal budget. Mm. And people would be like, the horror, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, 
Yep. Which is, you know, that's kind of funny to me. Like, wait a sec, you're lauding his budget. You said it was the greatest budget. I'll even give you inflation. Obama's budget plus inflation. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, but nobody would go. Republicans wouldn't go for that. Mm. So it's, yeah, it, it's wild. It's wild. What What do you think? Like, what do you imagine the good Lord is looking when He looks down at our country and sees what's going on? What do you think He is thinking or considering about this 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 people that He has down here? Mm. Well. I don't know if I got a really good answer for that. Uh, all I can say is I base my viewpoint on, you know, what scripture says um, and what was historically recorded. And, uh, you know, so we see the history of, you know, the Israelites and, um, you know, uh, all I know is, uh, you know, if God's angry, uh, you know, our creator's angry, uh, he's not on our side. Um, and that doesn't mean there's not forgiveness or redemption. But what I'm saying is when you have a whole culture that has turned their back on uh, recognizing, you know, what God has created for us uh, and the simple, I put it, guidelines to follow. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, unfortunately, my personal perspective, Mike, is the country in general, the uh, United States has turned their back on God. Um, and, and it's really uh, at the forefront and significant today when you have, you know, all these groups and organizations and LBGQ too and T and whatever and, you know, uh, Scripture is really clear about, uh, you know, what's right and wrong. Um, and, you know, this whole thing on the sanctity of marriage. So, you know, um, <clears throat> they can sit there and debate and argue all they want. I, I, the one thing that's interesting, you know, Mike, about this thing is Scripture is really clear, you know, that the Creator so loved us that He gave us free will. And unfortunately, uh, you have the free will to make ungodly decisions, bad decisions, um, and in some cases, you know, irreversible decisions. Um, and, you know, scripture is clear, uh, you know, that he says he'll turn them over to depraved minds. Yeah. And you know, it, it is interesting. Like it is very, it is very clear to me that yeah. God is way more interested in us choosing good than doing good. Right. He want and, and and that that agency that he's given us is going to lead people to make poor decisions mm -hmm. and and those poor decisions it's it's not like those those decisions are um, poor because um, you're not going to go to heaven or something like that like I don't believe that I, I what I believe is that they're poor decisions and what they lead to is suffering and pain in this life. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not personally to you, but overall as a society, if it, right. just imagine if, if everybody did, the, did what, what, you know, and I think about this, like if everybody did what I'm doing, um, you know, would that be good for society? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no, but it, it is, it, I think it's a valid question to ask. And, um, so I think, you know, people can find happiness wherever they find happiness, but but the reality is, as a society, um, it's it's doomed to failure, and there's historical precedents for for that. Mm -hmm. Well, what um so what what kind of things are you um looking towards to? I don't know, back away is the right word, but but pre to prepare yourself for um the you know we we just saw that that the a uh, Silicon Valley bank went under. Yep. Um, we saw, we've seen, um, gas prices inexplicably just, I think here in Arizona, they've gone up by 50 cents in the last, you know, three weeks, mm -hmm. um, at least. Right. And, and it's not like it's the time of year when it's time to change the formula. Like this is, this is an odd thing right now. Right. Um, we're seeing that happen. We're seeing, you know, food prices go through the roof. Um, we're, we're seeing again, 
a, a year out of COVID, we're still seeing problems with supply chains. We're seeing some problems with, um, we're seeing train derailments and, and not that that's truly unusual, but, uh, it's become, it's come to the forefront and it's causing devastating effects for people. Um, what is your strategy or, or what, what are the things that you're thinking about to protect you and your family? Well, um, you know, I think for me personally, and a lot of, you know, folks that I know, uh, you know, it's uh, probably a good time to seriously consider, um, you know, not only getting prepared, you know, supplies, whatever it is you're going to need uh, to be self-sufficient, but, you know, uh, possibly, you know, downsize, scale back, liquidate, you know, um, unnecessary, you know, whatever you want to call it, junk you carry around with you. Um, and then, you know, finally just, you know, get out of the big city um, because. That seems and, to be a theme yeah. that I hear from a lot of people. Yeah, because right? I, I think it's going to be mayhem in the cities, you know, because you think about it. When things really get desperate, and I mean, you know, economically, you know, uh, the prices, you know, food is, let's say, twice what we're paying now, gasoline's twice, you know, then this is going to be a serious problem because people won't have the money to, you know, pay their rent, their mortgage, feed their family. And in essence, um, you know, they're not going to have any money uh, to get to work, you know, drive to work. Um, and, uh, so I, I think unfortunately, you know, again, I, I'm no profit, but I'm just saying, I think the writing's on the wall, unfortunately, you know, and once that snowball starts, um, look out, you know, you, you better be ready. Yeah. Um, because, uh, unfortunately, you know, the proverbial snowball coming down the mountain is going to get big fast. Yeah. Um, so you know, um, you know, me, uh, Mike personally, <clears throat> I don't trust the banks at all. I've been telling friends of mine, get your money out of the retirement programs. Oh, you know, penalties, this, that, and the other. I said, well, let me ask you a question. So you've already had a loss. You told me because of the markets are dropping. And the problem is, you know, all these 401ks and IRAs for most part are tied into the market. Um, and there's been some major shifts in the market. And I'm not even following this stuff closely. I mean, I just, you know, hear you know, what's going on. And, and uh, you know, I've just told him, I said, man, you do whatever you want, but I'd pull it out and don't put that money in the bank. And they, and they go, what, do you, what would you do? I said, well, I don't know, buy land, you know, to live on or, you know, buy some, you know, precious metal, um, you know. And I said, the good thing about the metal is, Obviously, over time, historically, you can't go wrong. I mean, it's sort of like real estate, you know. You say, well, I guess it's a bad time to be buying real estate. Uh, I think it's a bad time to buy real estate if you're trying to finance real estate because, you know, the interest rates have uh, basically doubled um, in a very short period of time, which is, you know, actually less than a year. Well, and, and honestly, the interest rates should get to... If, if we were living under a real uh, a real ec economy and not a fake economy, interest rates should be probably around 12 or 18, maybe even 24. And that, and that would yeah. actually help. We, we could actually survive, um, I, think, I think, even thrive in the long term if, if we had interest rates that high. Because what would happen is people would then put money away to save. And that would increase the money that would increase the, the saving supply that mm -hmm. would then allow people see money is an interesting thing. High interest rates, they're, they're bad for loans, but they're good for savers. Right. And so what you want to do is encourage saving. And then what you want to do is flip that around. And then as, as there becomes more and more savers, interest rates will naturally fall. And then you'll create a market for, for loans. And that's, that's how this thing kind of works. But the problem is we've kept interest rates so blasted low for so long. It, it's it's like we've been just injecting caffeine and cocaine into the system over and over and over. And eventually the patient's going to die. 
Right. Right. No, I, 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 I completely understand your perspective and I'm not disagreeing. Um, you know, the reality is unfortunately, you know, we've gotten spoiled again, uh, you know, with, like you say, really rates that are just so ridiculously low. And, and, you know, it's interesting to bring this up, Mike, because when I purchased my first home in 1990, uh, FHA first time buyer, I was paying 10% interest. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and, um, yeah, I made my payments and all that, but, uh, I, I remember those days, you know, and, uh, so, yep, you're right. And I, I don't know, there, there's kind of a disparity. Cause I remember going back now, I don't know, <clears throat> approximately, uh, yeah, 15 years ago. So I guess it'd be pre 08, um, where, um, I had a CD at this financial institution. And then I took a secured loan against the CD. Um, and at that point, you know, it made economic sense to me. And, and I'll tell you why I won't go all the whole reasons why I did this, but you know, what it was, was I called it the return on interest versus the cost of borrowing money, that interest. I only had about a two point differential on right. two, 2%. So for me at the time, it just, you know, it made sense. But today you can't get that. You can't even come close to that on a CD versus a loan. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and the, I think that's the mistake that, that people, again, because we live in such a, here's the other thing that I really would like people to consider is when we have these artificially low interest rates mm -hmm. and the only reason why we're able to get away with it is, is because for now, the dollar is the uh, the gold standard, dare I say? <laughs> that was a poor choice of words, but the gold, but but the dollar is is the um, the thing that 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 all the currencies are 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 based on. Yeah, the and world currencies. Yep. Right, and so what happens is uh, we end up, and and it's kind of sick to think about. It, it kind of makes me sick to my stomach because you realize that all all of our wealth is really so much of it is based on the, the the fact that all these other currencies are so reduced compared to the dollar that in a weird strange way we have become the colonialists of the world mm -hmm. and and everything that we own and everything that we have come to appreciate is is made off the backs of really reduced wages because it just it kind of makes me sick because it, because it, you realize oh man all of this is is really it's so artificial and it's like we're we're in America at the top of the food chain and those poor people all around the world that are making our stuff like what do we do about that and and honestly the best way to do that and it's not making us poor this is a really important thing it, if it doesn't make us poor. It just shifts the burden. If we raise interest rates, it will cause people to want to save more money. And mm -hmm. that, and that, what that does is that get, that gets the money out of the, the money supply. It pulls it out. It's earning interest. It's, it's creating, it's like, it's being stashed away. And so there's less money that's being used on a daily basis. And all of a sudden prices start to come down a lot of really good things happen if we can raise rates. And, and I know people don't want to hear that because yeah, that means that you're man, that, that when you overextended on that loan, it's for that house, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt really, really bad, but it's the only way to save it. And I don't, but I don't think anybody in Washington has the guts to do that. And frankly, they don't want to, because right now the fed is getting rich off stealing from us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a whole nother conversation. Right. <laughs> so yeah, um yeah, it's um interesting times for sure. And um you know, it's it's interesting, Mike, you know, I've had discussions with folks, you know, in recent you know, time, past year or so, and you know, they talk about our, you know, national debt right yeah that's so out of control and i said well you know what's really scary is when you look into all debt 
So you have the national government debt, mm -hmm. right? But that's not really all the debt. So I tell people, I said, you need to find out right now, corporate debt is at a record history high in history, right? So we have this so-called government budget that's out of control, right? With, you know, again, more spending, more borrowing, um, <clears throat> and then massive debt, uh, you know, has occurred because of this uh, unwise, you know, fiduciary handling of, uh, you know, our so-called tax dollars. And then the other factor is, so we talk about those two. The third one is personal debt. You know, how much people are accrued in personal debt. Um, and I tell people, I tell them, I said, start doing the crunch, the numbers. I mean, it's, it's staggering. It's, it, you know, it's, it's like, it's like a hundred trillion dollars in debt. And I said, here, here's why I'm telling you this. I said, when you sit down and really, you know, crunch numbers and figure things out, how is that all going to get paid back? I mean, it's insane. I mean, well, you know, we can't even pay it back in our lifetime. That's how crazy those numbers are. But, but John, here's the thing. Yeah. That's, that's how the system is built. If we paid back all the debt, let's say magically there was a way to do it, and we paid back all the debt, every penny, the national debt, our, our, uh, the corporate debt, the consumer debt, the mortgage debt, all that was paid off, there would literally be zero dollars in the economy. Every dollar that is floating around in the economy right now is debt. Everything like when, when we hold up a $10 bill, what that's really saying is I'm holding 10 little IOUs that somebody else has given me. And so if I were to use, if all the debt is paid back, there's no currency. Well, what does that mean? That means we have to go back to real money, gold, silver, mm -hmm. uh, precious metals, doing, figuring out a way other than the fiat currency that we're using today. Yep. And and so, so that my point is that is how, and, and this isn't like a conspiracy. This isn't, I mean, it is a conspiracy, but it's not like it's a fake conspiracy. Mm -hmm. This is how the fed is getting rich off of us. This is how we're becoming right. slaves to those in power. And it, it, because at any moment they can raise rates at any moment, they could change the system and we're, we, we're all subject to that change. And we're not free where if we had a real money, if we used real money, then we can step outside of the system. And if, if somebody, if a bank makes a change on their note, it doesn't affect you because you're using real money. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm saying like, we need to start thinking about money in a real way yep. instead of thinking about money, like the, the greenbacks that we're holding. Yep. Well, I agree. And, um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how many people don't understand the whole system, and uh, you know, like you said, this paper dollar, you know, it's just a faith based system at this point. You know, people believe it's worth something, and uh, like you said, it's not backed by anything. Well, there's that great line, the Milton Freeman line, which is funny to me. You know, he talks about, um, you know, we have such a great system where we send we send money basically we send paper with numbers printed on it mm -hmm. over to a foreign nation and we get back vehicles you know it's that's kind of a great system for us right until it's not right yep until it's not well you know and i think mike unfortunately a lot of americans are pretty ignorant about a lot of this stuff on the fiduciary side you know like going back in history how we have this you know global currency the usd is supposedly the global standard it's tied into opec but i think all those walls are falling in and yeah the reason being is because uh economically you know russia is actually doing quite well um and you have russia you have china you have india and you know what's pretty staggering about those three countries, you know, people just don't seem to get is that's almost half the world's population. Yep. Um, so <clears throat> they, they're right now, I know with the world monetary banking system, you know, they're 
they're pushing really hard and they're very close to yanking the USD as the global standard currency. And you know, and I know my friend, when that happens, all hell's going to break loose in this country. And, really? and I really, really think that phew, people think things are crazy uh, right now with, with the costs of living and inflation and how much it's wrapped up already just over a couple of years. It, we, we could see three or four X exponentially on that. Right. You know, we could. And that's why, again, I think it's so important for us to be self-sufficient, get out of the system, uh, get back to like you said a real cash system where we can exchange in business through bartering precious metals uh even jewels whatever it is you know you're into um, yeah. there's plenty of things um i think crypto could, could be a solution i don't know if it is the solution but it could be a solution uh yeah um i know you and me both are are, are interested in that arena uh and have a some faith in that system um the only problem right now i have with crypto is you know it's tied in to the monetary system right now uh a matter of fact i just had a good friend of mine uh just let me know about this actually today um you know what what they're doing now in the banking system globally uh, all the major banks now are going to try and outlaw you utilizing uh, their fiduciary system to purchase crypto. And so they're going to basically, you know, outlaw it, blacklist it, whatever you want to call it. And the same thing, if you have money coming out of crypto back into their system, right. You know, so, uh, I think, you know, it has to, uh, you know, be a system, you know, that you can utilize, uh, between you and me, um, and, you know, or whoever that is, you know, individuals we're doing business with. And we can, ex you know, accept that, uh, you know, crypto valuation or whatever it is. Right, right. There, it has to be a peer-to-peer -peer kind of a thing. Yep. It's got to be and something that we both recognize as something valuable. Right. Um. Uh. And which is why I am bullish on Bitcoin and not bullish on just about any other crypto. <laughs> I think I think I think Bitcoin is still the gold standard. It um, is. And I, I agree. Uh, you know, you know, and the funny thing is I, you know, about, we've talked about this Mike before about this whole thing. Bitcoin now is the great, great grandfather of crypto. Right. Um, and you know, it just has a lot of shortcomings, unfortunately, you know, in the crypto world for me, but there's no arguing the fact that it is the great grandfather and it, it has the driving force and momentum affecting all other crypto. That's just, right. that's the hardcore rally. So, you know, even if you like Litecoin or, you know, Ether or whatever it is, it, it, you know, and, you know, hey man, go for it. Stockpile all that stuff you want. But the reality is, and it, we've seen in the market, man, when Bitcoin's on the rise and it's taken off, they're all following suit. And when it comes crashing down, they're all following suit. So. Right. Uh, there's there's no there's no doubt that the bitcoin is the earmark i mean that you can't get away from that and yeah. and i think bitcoin is also it's going to be i think the most um it, it's going to be the the best way for people to hold value in the cyberspace uh in other words it's not going to be gold where you can hold it directly in your hands but it will be far superior to any banking ledger. Mm -hmm. And eventually it's, it's going to become clear that, that, that crypto is, or specifically Bitcoin is a legitimate way to determine value. Uh, I, I, that's my hope. I, I think it will. I think it will. Anyway, um, finishing up here, Mr. Jack, I got a question for you. Yes. Leave us with some hope, brother. <laughs> Preach the word. What, 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 uh, hello, hello Moto. Sorry I am your that. Moto Voto and we Soto around the store with a Goto. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So what's your question? Leave you with some positive. Well, work. yeah, give it give us some positivity, Brother Ross. Come on. All right. Well, uh yeah, I um <laughs> I I you know such you know, this goes back to a little bit earlier in the conversation on some things we were talking about, but you know, uh how how can we make a meaningful positive impact you know in 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 our community or you know here in our little domain if you will and uh, so that that's that's what i'm really all about you know i certainly do not have all the answers uh you know i i just rely mike on my you know strong faith uh, and you know, our, our wonderful creator and, uh, you know, for me personally, you know, my savior, you know, Jesus Christ. And, you know, I, I just, I, I, I'm staying focused on, you know, uh, the really good things that encourage me in scripture. Um, and another thing that's important to me in my life, uh, for having a positive outlook and outcome is, you know, I've really limit myself to negative information uh you know all the propaganda media news stuff i just really just have cut back so far and i'm not tied into either uh these you know social media systems you know facebook etc right I, I i'm not engaged in that stuff at all um you know and, excuse me uh, while i check my feed sure <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And so anyway, but uh yeah, and then I you know, I listen to uh you know, just some really good, you know, music. Um, you know, to just uh I think get, get get my mind in order. Um and um you know, one of the things I do now, uh, which is quite interesting, I I, I try to avoid rush hour traffic at all, you know, cost, right? Which right. Is, fortunately i'm able to do quite a bit but whenever i'm unfortunately engaged in that madness and man there's some crazies out there today i hear i hear <laughs> i hear this from a lot of people but yeah. i i uh you know i i listen to um you know classical symphony music yep uh while i'm driving and i've actually found that that's quite effective at uh just keeping me calm and uh, not engaging in some crazy person's you know road rage nonsense yeah uh you know uh, so there's some real uh lunatics out there so that that's what i'm doing and i encourage people you know to find things in their life and my other thing is just get out um more uh out of the big city and into you know our our god's just amazing creation out there i mean yep. there's just so much to see and enjoy um and you know as you get older I think this comes more true. You know, there's things, uh, you know, you hear these sayings, like it's just the little small things in life now that mean a lot. Yeah. Um, and you don't get wrapped up in all the big stuff, um, you know. Uh, and you may have talked about this, uh, you know, <clears throat> just, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it, a radical position or viewpoints, but, you know, I, like I said, I don't have any easy answers to fix all the madness that's going no, on, corruption. I think, but I think clean, are... cleaning house is one of them in Washington, and I mean cleaning house. Yeah. Uh, you know, for significant change, because you talked about this earlier. You know, with you know, voting in whatever you want to call it, the ideal politician. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 I don't, I, I really don't think you know people. Uh, you know, I, I've been approached about going in politics i said i'd never make it and they go what do you mean i said i i i just i wouldn't live very long yeah uh, you know, because <laughs> you know uh, i love broadcasting the truth um and people ah it's all perspective Ian. but i i really try to be analytical about the truth you know really looking for multiple positions and i look at from opposition viewpoints too um and the reason i do that to a certain extent not continuously but i do because you know it's good to have that insight and perspective because sometimes you learn something you know hey you know i really never thought about it or looked at it at, at that from you know that perspective and and uh you know you can get some obviously good insight that doesn't mean i agree and 
suddenly necessarily change my position, um, you know, on that. But so anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to be a positive influence to my, you know, network of friends, my, my family, um, you know, and uh, just encourage them and, you know, disengage so much from this, you know, all forms of media, I call it, yep. you know, uh, now people are like, well, yeah, that's what, you know, that's what music and entertainment is. I mean, for me, I, I can just, you know, whatever, be driving down a road in my car, or I can listen on my headset, you know, at home. Um, so that, that's what I do. And I, I think that, you know, my thing is too, is, uh, going out, um, in engaging more, uh, in, in the community. Uh, I think what's happened to a lot of people, not me per se, but in general, people have just, uh, become more hermits, you know, hanging out and just not going out and doing things. Um, so <clears throat> I love live music. Um, went to a concert last week. Um, saw an 83 year old keyboard player. Woo. Absolutely phenomenal. That's I mean, awesome. the guy was just, just fantastic. And, uh, yeah, if you want to check him out, his name's Bob James, Bob James, famous jazz guitar guy, uh, you know, music, I should About say. To I call out to Bob James. We'll have to check it out. Oh, uh, he's just incredible. That's great. So was his band. And then going to uh see some more live music this coming week. So good. Yeah. Um, and I like the like the stuff I go to and we'll move on. I got to get going here, but you know, small venues. That's what I like. Yeah. Um that you know, the venue I saw Bob James in, a over six hundred <laughs> seats. This uh <laughs> venue I'm going to this coming week is gonna be three hundred seat venue. So very intimate um and fantastic acoustics love it good sound for us uh nice you know where do you where do you go locally do you go do you go to the nash where do you go uh so yeah i uh go probably i don't know three or four times a year to the musical instrument museum yep they have they've got great concerts there they do they have a real broad spectrum of music and international people you've never heard of so uh yeah and uh yeah just very cool yeah just a not one of the best places i've ever been to acoustically and i've been a lot of good places but it's whoever designed it they definitely got some sound engineer in there or whatever and yeah it's, it's phenomenal. phenomenal well that's good well jack i appreciate you being on the show yeah thanks ladies and gentlemen that was jack c ross my name is mike lovett and you're listening to And If Love Remains. So as if we're finishing up, I just want to remind people, please put your comments in. Let us know what you think of this episode. Pass it on to your friends. You know, any little bit helps. Really appreciate it. Go check us out on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Amazon, everywhere you find your, po your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Music, or Apple, I think it's Apple Music. Um, and uh, yeah, just look up And If Love Remains. You are listening to And If Love Remains. The first of 23 installments requested by Dr. Levitt trying to be in compliance here because we're taking him and that whole organization down.